part of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I am reminded by him in his khutbah wada that shaitan has given up hope in deceiving us in the big thing. No more will you find a sensible person worshipping a stone or worshipping uh, some other uh, kind of creation of their own hand. But what you will find are people who they worship as the Prophet Islam warned us. He warned us about another kind of worship. That there would be people who would worship their race. And so he reminds us there is no superiority of the Arab over the non-Arab or the non-Arab over the Arab or the black over the white that no one after this day should worship their race. The Prophet warned us in this football with that. He said, I fear that next year I will not be with you. So be careful of taking care of your women. And we live in a world today where women are still abused, but alhamdulillah, if you go on Hajj, you will find in the pilgrimage to Mecca that a woman is safe, day or night. Wallahi, I have been on Hajj, I see a woman sleeping on the street with her child, and no one will bother her, because they are answering to a higher call. They are answering the call of Allah to come to Allah's house to worship Him, and their call is Labayk Allahumma Labayk. Labayk la sharika lak labayk in the hamda wa ni'mata lak wa al-mulk. La sharika lak. That they, alhamdulillah, are answering the call to Allah to come every race, every color, every class, all now equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is amazing. Because in America today, they will tell you the biggest problem is still the problem of race and class and gender. The Prophet وسلم, gives us an example in this celebration of Alhamdulillah of one family, Ibrahim السلام, Hajar and their son Ismail. Each of them say, I will put whatever Allah desires above my desire. That I will prioritize my life to put my life in the order that Allah wants my life to be in and after that I am sure with my effort Allah will take care of me. Whether it is Hajar money for Zanza or whether it is for Ismail offering himself to be sacrificed. Or even him to leave the family that he loves because of the command of Allah. Each one of them they did what Allah asked them to do, putting their priority second to what Allah's priority is. And so there were no issues between them. Hajar doesn't say, because you're my husband, I'm going to obey you. She said, I'm going to obey you because this is what Allah asked you to do. The son says, Father, I'm not obeying you because you're my father. I'm obeying you because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for me. But alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I am sharing with you today that we have as an ummah achieved a great success. That success, alhamdulillah, to live for one day on Arafah as one humanity. No corruption on that day. Alhamdulillah, to live millions of us from all over the world speaking different languages. For one week, Alhamdulillah, to live and when someone abuses you, you say, Sabah, Sabah. Because I don't want you to lose the reward of your highs. Not me. I don't want you to lose the reward. So stay calm and patient. Alhamdulillah, that Allah might accept it from you. Our challenge for those who are not on high, can we take that lesson into our own life? Can we live that kind of life here? Can the Hujaj, when they leave Mecca, can they take that with them? Saying that, alhamdulillah, from this day, Allah has forgiven us of our sins from this act of worship. And now we are going to set our affairs in life that Allah might enter us into his general life.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد سبحان الله brothers and sisters I I I don't want to keep you long time but I want to show you just an example of how الحمد لله while this world is spinning in all of its problems with war and violence and, and conflict that there is an example from the Prophet وسلم, to give hope to all of you men. Hope that all of us can live together. Hope that we can have justice. Hope that we will share our resources. And to transcend all of the little things that shaitan comes to deceive us with. Many years ago I was on Hajj. Maybe if you don't know I'm African American. I grew up in an America where if you lived in Virginia, you had to go to the black water fountain and the white water fountain. And if you went deeper south, you couldn't go in certain restaurants. This is in America. And even in the 1970s, they were trying to integrate the school T.C. Woodley. There was still this issue, even in the election of Barack Obama as president, people were still asking the race question. They asked the gender question about Hillary Clinton. That this issue still pervades the society's mind. When Alhamdulillah, the Prophet وسلم, and Allah's deen perfected this centuries ago. Years ago I was performing Hajj. And you know when you are making tawaf around the Kaaba, that it becomes very, it's very crowded. If you're in a crowd like that, and I see some people who are on Hajj uh, with, with me, when you're on Hajj like that, and you, you can get lost. If you, if you lose your group, when well, those of you that, it's six million people documented, maybe four million people are documented. If you get lost in the crowd, when well, those of you that, you may not find your group for days. So while we were making Tawaf, I saw a man and his wife with two small children and one older child. It's over 100 degrees. And the father's holding both children while staying close to his wife and the older child. And I can see after making tawaf for them that he's becoming very tired. But I know and he knows. We're strangers. We don't know each other. The only thing that we know is that we were all brought here by the invitation of Allah to his heart. Maybe I'm black, maybe he's from another race, I don't know what group he's from. We don't speak maybe the same language. But I looked at him as a father, and I saw that he was becoming weary carrying his child. He had to make seven circuits around the town. And so I gestured to him as a brother in Islam. I will carry your child for you. And he looks at me and then he looks at his wife. Should I give this man that I don't know in the crowd of, of six million people, should I give him my child? Can I trust him? And I looked at him and I know as an African American man, people, they looked at us with that kind of look like, uh, I don't know, man, you know. <laughs> so I reached my arm out and I put my arm around his arm. And what happened to that, he gave me his child. That act we made two hours together, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't even know each other's name. All we know is that to get through this life, we have to get through it together. Sometimes we have to rely on one another. And maybe somebody might say, well, Imam, that was just, that was just one unique circumstance out of millions of interactions. And I can tell you, alhamdulillah, that for those who are making hajj on our behalf now, each one of them can tell you how the experience of transcending the individuality to become 
in part of the Ummah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we can walk together, alhamdulillah, in peace, in love and trust for one another. Alhamdulillah, that Allah might accept our worship and give us the reward of the day. Oh Allah, we ask for your mercy on your peace on this. Ya Allah, we ask for your mercy, Ya Allah, on those who are on Hajj, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask that you accept their Hajj. Ya Allah, grant them Hajj Mabro, wa Zabu Makfur, wa Sayyir Maskur, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, perfectly acceptable Hajj, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, accept their dua on our behalf, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, as they stand before your house, Ya Allah, asking for your forgiveness. Oh Allah, we ask for Alhamdulillah that for those of us who are here, Ya Allah, that our hearts stay connected to your heart. Oh Allah, that our hearts stay connected to your deen. Oh Allah, help us that our hearts might be connected, Ya Allah, to this salah. Oh Allah, that we might be joined together, Alhamdulillah, with the best in this life. Oh Allah, and the best in this life. Oh Allah, we ask for your mercy on those who are suffering, Ya Allah, with oppression around the world. Oh Allah, grant them your peace, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, those who are suffering from poverty and disease, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, help our, our sadaqah and our zakah reach them, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, that they would give thanks. Oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on those of us, Ya Allah, who are suffering around the corner, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and around the world. Oh Allah, join our hearts together with your Oh Allah, give us your essay. Grant us for faith, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, keep us on your salam. Ya Allah, forgive us of our sins. Allah, join the hearts of the husbands and wives, the parents and children, Ya Allah. Allah, to have mercy on our old people, Ya Allah, that they strive and struggle, Allah, to keep us from this peace. Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on the Prophet, and on his family and on his companions, and on all of the Anbiya, Ya Allah, those who follow the way of Haq, Ya Allah, until the day of judgment. Amen. Oh, sorry. Assalamu alaikum. Three more